The KSO Show is here, and I'm Derek Young, joined by Grant Flanders. Position previews, that's what we've done throughout fall camp, continues today with the tight end position, another group that will be relied on in the passing game. And first off, just, just how pivotal was the addition, Grant? I'm joined by Grant Flanders. I'm Derek Young. How just pivotal was the addition of Daniel E. Matter Bebe in the offseason? He could be end up being um, the most lethal pass catcher in this offense. Uh, that's that's how important that addition was to this team. Um, and that's the guy I would predict to be because uh, we've seen him talk, you know, we've, <laughs> and he's a very impressive guy. Um, we've seen, we've, you know, you've seen him throughout his college career dealing with injuries, but he's been on a D1 roster every uh, year of his college career, even if it is three different programs. Uh, he and and so you know this guy is going to be a key addition probably the biggest addition um on the offensive side of the ball transfer wise um he's a quick twitch big guy that can get up field and make plays um and i yeah i didn't realize i think how big he was until we got next to him and his arm was about the size of uh I, my head two times like it's, it, it was incredible to see, you know, just a large uh, human being um, and about, you know, a good 6'4", or whatever he is listed at. You know, he's he seems like a really, really, really well put together tight end. And it is interesting to hear, too. I mean, we'll talk about all this, but like him say that basketball was his first sport because, you know, tight ends can usually be a guy that can play really well on the basketball side of things. And I, I wasn't surprised to hear that. I didn't know that before he said it. And um, I think he's going to be a really exciting pass catcher in this offense. Blocking will be, I think, the biggest question mark. Yep, and I'm going to agree with that. He's certainly going to be a very important weapon in the passing game as long as he can stay healthy. Um, and then they'll rely on him quite quite a bit. Obviously, this is the second year in a row that they've added a transfer at the tight end position to be a reliable pass catcher within the confines of the offense. A year ago, it was Briley Moore, a transfer from Northern Iowa, but a Kansas City native, and he was a very effective player for the Wildcats. But even Jason Ray was, even though not afraid to acknowledge that the difference between the two is you probably do get a little bit more quicker movement skills from a matter of Bebe, probably a little bit more quick twitch from a matter of Bebe. So those are probably some things that are certainly intriguing. I don't know that he's the, as massive as Briley. I think Briley was probably a little bit more thicker, a little bit more stronger, uh, certainly at the point of attack in terms of blocking. He was a very underrated blocker, actually. So we'll see how much Matter Bebe is effective in that department or how much he will embrace it. I don't think they'll have a problem with his dedication and him embracing that part of his game, but it's certainly something to keep an eye on at least early on in the season. Although, if we're being honest, they, certainly they're going to run the ball quite a bit, so he'll have to do some blocking. But in terms of the passing, he's not going to be a pass. He shouldn't be a pass blocker. He should be running routes when, when Skylar Thompson's going back under center to throw the ball. Uh, let's look at the rest of the, the tight end group. And I did talk about my Bay Bay's health. It's been good so far. So yeah. far, so good. But it's interesting part is the rest of the group is a little bit banged up in fall camp, probably the most sneak bit position at this point, um, I haven't t discussed it at length a whole lot, but I think Connor Fox is probably at the is probably going to miss a few games, and I think he was someone that they thought they they were going to rely on because he had improved as as a weapon in the passing game. Sammy Wheeler's dealing with a little bit of a a ding, but he may not miss a game. Nick Lenners is was di dinged up a little bit as well, but I think he he might have returned at the time you're listening to this particular podcast. So. Um, a banged up group, but interestingly enough, I think they have a, plenty of options here. Maybe none like that you're going to say, oh, yeah, they're definite all Big 12 players, even though Nick Lenners was as a fullback at one point, and we're still talking about the tight ends. We'll, we'll touch on the fullbacks just a little bit at the end of this. But so um, none that I would say, man, the, these are all world guys, but they do have plenty of options after a matter, baby. They do. I mean, the, the, the key part will be the health, as you mentioned, um, for all of them, a matter, baby included, since he's had a, a injury riddled career, obviously seems to be 100 percent now as far as what coaches are saying. But that back end, you're right. Um, it'll be interesting to see because Sammy Wheeler, Wheeler, I think, is another guy who can be um, an effective pass catcher in this offense and find ways to 
be really effective, you know, intermediate routes, short routes, and find ways to keep moving the chains. And I think that will be his key. You know, I think Matarbebe can be a little more of a downfield threat um, from that perspective, but I don't think Sammy Wheeler should also be counted out in that perspective either. Connor Fox, I think, is another guy who, if he can, you know, get healthy and stay healthy, can can be a, a really effective um, pass catcher in this offense. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how he unfolds, but he has exciting, you know, size. Um, he's still young, and we've heard good things about him so far, you know, in practices and such. So um, there, there's those. And then the fact is that all three of those guys are more of the pass-catching type. That's what makes the Nick Lenners, you know, uh, his health would be, you know, a very apparent because he's one of the guys left in that group that can actually block, I feel like. Out of all of them, he's probably the best blocker. Um, Matter Bebe, you know, maybe could show some things this, this year, but until we see that, I, I just don't know about um, his blocking ability. So that, that, I think it's, it's unfortunate that they're having the health issues, but it, it is a much more deep position than we saw even just a year ago. I would agree, and I do also agree, because I was also going to bring up it's interesting that Nick Lenners might be a little bit more valuable this year just because K-State's going to ask for tight ends to block. That's the way it mm -hmm. goes. you got to block if you're going to play tight end in Manhattan um, with this particular coaching staff. And Nick Lenners is the one of the four that we're talking about, you know, with him, Lenners, Amander Bebe, Connor Fox, that's most inclined to do that, um, the, the more suited to do that. So having him healthy, which I don't think – his injury, if it's still ongoing by the time you listen to this, is really a concern. He actually has probably more value this year than he would than he has in, in years prior. So it's probably very important for him to stay on the good side, good side of things. Let, let's go to the fullbacks because they do group those positions together, and, so, and I guess in, in ways you could say some of these are more of an H back type because the one guy we've heard a little bit and he's even dinged up. We'll see how much he'll play. Is Ben Sinnott. Um, he's an eight, probably fits that H back role along with Christian Moore. Although I think Ben Sinnott is a guy they really want to rely on this year. Um, we touched on that on a site. So if you're not a member, you should be a member and you'll probably garner that kind of information on a regular basis because Ben Sinnott's probably a guy, even if it's not week one or week two, that's going to end up being a pretty integral player for the Wildcats this season. Uh, Mason Barda also is a fullback that will get some usage. And then, of course, there's Jack Stanine, um, which is – probably the more well-known guy, even though Mason Bart has probably corralled more snaps each of the last two seasons. Uh, but I, I do think we'll probably see a little bit more Jackson Neen than we've had in the past because it sounds like he had a good offseason. And I think that's important because Jackson Neen, I think, is the most uh, dynamic out of the bunch. He actually has, you know, some decent athleticism. I mean, good athleticism for his size and weight and height and everything. Um and, you know, you don't expect it out of him. Flu the fluidity he plays with on the field is impressive out of the fullback position. So he will be important, I think, um, for this team and, uh, to, to get be on the field. I think Mason Barta, he's got experience, like you just said. So he's going to be important as well. He's more of a bulldozer type of a fullback. Um, so I think he's comparable. He, I think he's... Uh, He's a good fit next to a guy, or you know, subbing in and out for a guy like Jackson. You know, or maybe they use both in uh, three back sets or or whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see how they use the fullbacks and and whatnot because obviously they do enjoy using that position in this offense. Messingham um, likes using them to block. Sometimes finds them in space, and I think Jackson Ean would be a guy that you wouldn't mind finding in space here and there, maybe to pick up a first down um, and catch the defense off guard, throwing to the fullback. Um, but then the Senate, the Senate, uh, Senate, see, I have to get used to saying his name now too. the walk on, that's going to be an exciting one to watch to see how he develops. Um, because you know, the, they, they use their fullbacks and I think he's going to be able to get some, some real deal time this year, as you stated, and that's going to be big for the future of that position. I think. Yeah. I, I've even had it said to me by a couple of different sources. Don't be surprised if we see a few carries and a few, a few catches for Jackson Dean this year. I think he's going to have the ball in his hands a little bit, even a little bit more than we saw each of the last two seasons. Hey, tight ends are important to this offense. So we're fullbacks. They're in a pro style. They're all going to be used. And just like any other position, probably plenty of options that this 
coaching staff, I mean, by now everyone should know it. They're not afraid to play a lot of different players at each different position, and that'll be the case also at fullback and at tight end. That's that position. We have more on the way. For Grand Flanders, I'm Derek Young. Tell your friends.